بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم Adam, come on, man. Hey. Hey, you on camera already? Come on, come on. Show this. How you doing, brother? Salaam alaikum. Can I hear that again? Adam, please. Come on, man. Oh, brother. Nah, man. I got your name. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم حامم الكتاب المبين إنا جعلناه قرآنا عربيا لعلكم تعقلون وإنه في الأم الكتاب لدينا لعلي حكيم أفنذرب عنكم الذكر صفا أن كنتم قوما مسرفين وكم أرسلنا من نبي في الأولين وما يأتيهم من نبي إلا كانوا به يستهزئون صدق الله العظيم وبلغ رسول كريم ونحن على ما قال مولانا ومصطفانا من الشاهدين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته One little personal incident about what I mentioned about people's past a personal experience that I had I was at, at, at a masjid where I was leading the prayer. And so, it was during the daytime, I think it was Salat al-Asr. The masjid is not that busy. A young gentleman walked in to the masjid to pray. Now, the gentleman was literally covered in tattoos. From his fingers up to his neck, completely covered in tattoos. And so, now obviously, somebody like that walks into the masjid, and what do we immediately do? Reach for your phone. Right? Something bad's about to happen. Right? So obviously people get nervous. So I, it was, we were actually walking in for the prayer. The iqamah was being called. I said, Salaamu Alaikum. He said, Wa Alaikum Salaam. We went in and we prayed. After Salah, I turned around. I said, hey, first time I had ever seen them there at the masjid. I said, Salaamu Alaikum. Brother, never seen you before. See, I just moved to the area just last week. And so I just found the masjid. I just got a job. I just found the masjid. And so I thought I'd come pray after work. And he was still in his work uniform. So I said, okay, mashallah, welcome. And so, then I started talking to him. Where are you from? Where'd you grow up? What's your name? Started getting to know the brother. And he starts talking and talking. And he starts telling me his story, kind of his story. And he says that he was, he's actually of, an, he's of Thai background. Eastern Asian, Thailand. His folks are from Thailand. He's of Thai background. And he says, tells me that his uncle was really caught up in the crime ring, uh, in a lot of drugs and a lot of crime where he grew up. In California, his uncle was caught up, he was like a gang leader, he was really, really bad, involved in a lot of horrible stuff. A lot of crime, a lot of bad stuff. He said growing up, his mother tried to shield him and protect him from that whole, uh, the whole family history there in the family situation, but he said that eventually he joined the family business. He said like around 14, dropped out of school, started you know slinging drugs selling drugs on corners started committing crimes started robbing people drive-bys the whole bit got involved in the whole scene and he said by the time i was 23 years old i had already been to prison twice already been to prison twice horrible life just crime 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 all the time and he said when i was 23 years old i was arrested for the third time now in california they have three strikes and you're in jail for life, that's it, you're done. So he said, I was arrested for the third time and he said, I was sitting in jail at night. The next morning I was gonna be presented, I was gonna be arraigned, presented before the judge. And he said, sitting there at night, I realized this is my third strike. And he said, at that moment, it finally hit me, my life is over. My life is over. I'm 23 and my life is over. And he said, at that moment, it just sunk in. Because when you're caught up in that whole lifestyle, you don't think. He said, it sunk in. And it hit me. My life's over. So he said, at that moment, I just couldn't help myself. He said, in my cell, I fell into sujood. I did sajda. I put my face on the ground. He said, he said, it was the first time in nearly 10 years that I had done sajda. The last time I had done sajda, when as I went 10 years ago, and I went to the masjid with my mom. Since then, I hadn't even done such. I hadn't prayed for 10 years. He said, I did such. And at that moment, life changed. He said, I cried all night long. And I made dua to Allah. And he said, I said, oh Allah, I realize what I've done with my life. Give me another chance, another opportunity. 
I'll change my ways. And I'll, I, I will totally change my ways. And he said, at that moment, I felt like I needed to make an intention. What am I going to do? Allah, if you save me from this moment, what will I do with my life? And he said, I remember when I was a child, my mom always had one wish. And that was, I would become a hafid of Qur'an. She said, oh, your grandfather was a hafid, but your uncle went bad, and everybody in your uh, family didn't follow in your grandfather's footsteps. You should, I want you to be a hafid and revive that tradition that your grandfather had, be a hafid of Qur'an. And he said, I remembered that at that moment, because I'm thinking about Allah, I'm thinking about my mother and how much I hurt her. So I decided, I say, oh Allah, if I'm able to get out of here, I am going to go and become a hafid of Qur'an. I'm going to memorize Qur'an. He said when he's presented before the judge the next day, he said the judge looks at the file, looks at me, my mom sitting in the back of the courtroom crying her eyes out. I'm a young man. He said, judge looked at the file, closes the file, says stand up. He says, if I was to let you go right now, what would you do? And he said, it's funny you ask me that because last night I had a change of heart. I repented. And I'm going to change my life. And I'm going to go and I'm going to study my religion and study the Quran, the book of Allah. And I'm going to commit myself to being a good person. So the judge said, all right. Charges, case dismissed, get out of here. Be on your way. He said, I walked out of the courtroom. My mom is crying, can't believe that this happened. He said, I asked her, mom, how much money you got in your pocket? How much money you got in your purse? She pulled out 40, 50 bucks. My uncles were there. Give me, give me whatever cash you got. He said, I got about a couple of hundred bucks. I said, somebody drive me to the bus stop right now. Drive me to the bus stop right now. He said he jumped on a bus, rode a bus to the nearest major Islamic center, found out where's their Quran memorization program. 23 year old man, just literally no clothes. He said, I had nothing. I went to an Islamic center, said, where can I go to memorize Quran? They said, oh, there's a uh, place, there's a school for Quran memorization that's 200 miles from here. It's in this and this city, this is the address. He said, I jumped on another bus on a Greyhound and I went to there. And I literally walked in the door, said, hi, my name is this, I want to memorize the Quran. Like, okay, come on in. The man tells me, he was 23 years old at the time. He memorized the entire Quran. This, this, guy, this man, young man didn't even know how to read Alif Ba Ta Tha. He started from scratch. He memorized the entire Quran cover to cover in eight months. Eight months he memorized the entire Quran. He's, I, I've had him lead prayer. I've heard him read. Beautiful recitation. Knows his Quran. And today, years later, a husband and a father. And his children, when you see his children, the adab, the character that they have, he himself personally is making his children memorize Qur'an. Amazing. People's past and what they can become. فَإِنَّ الذِّكْرَى تَنْفَعُ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ